Now that we have our camera animation complete, let's go ahead and lock that just so we don't accidentally screw it up. You can lock attributes by selecting the object you want and going and selecting the attributes, right-clicking on them after selecting them and going lock selected. So now if, we, if I try to move the view here, I can't. And that's what I want. I don't want to accidentally think I'm in perspective camera and then I start moving around and realize I totally screwed up the uh, camera animation. So let's play this forward a little bit so we have a frame to work off of with the camera animation and all the trails and everything work nicely. So I'm gonna hit escape here. I'm gonna let the curves and things fall apart a little bit. So what I wanna look at is the reflections we're getting on the, in the lighting that we're doing on the main logo. So I'm gonna open up the Arnold render view and I'm gonna hit play and it is using the render camera shape, which is good. So we also might need to back the camera up a little bit. That framing doesn't seem to match. There we go. It didn't update the camera, even though it was set to render cam shape, that was kind of weird. It didn't update, I had to actually toggle off and on it. And I just noticed because this the distance from here to here wasn't the same just a minute ago. So anyway, now we got the right camera. We're looking through the right one. Now what I want to start to affect is the position of the skydome light so that the reflections are kicking off of this thing the way I want them to. So I basically select the rotate Y, which is rotating around, and then I can middle mouse drag in the viewport and watch it update in the render view. You can see this is the darker side of the image that uh, of the skydome light. And I just want to zoom that around, rotate it around until we get it some kind of interesting reflection happening off of the front a little bit. The other thing you can do, we could animate the, or, or change the random rotation. If you remember way back when in the MASH network, this is one of the nice things of procedural animation is making changes on the fly. If we wanted to adjust some of the random rotations that it's starting with, let's open up the MASH uh, editor and we can go down to random. And even though we you know, did this way back when, we can make these adjustments on the fly now and it still affects everything and it has all of the... Um, and you know what, actually we'll, we'll have to replay because it's doing a simulation. We'll actually have to replay for the, to see these changes. So let's jump back here. And now you can see it's all jacked up because the values were so high. So let's undo those. The one thing I do want to do, instead of doing taking that route, what I want to do is change this, the roughness of the shader. So I'm going to scroll over to that. I'm going to do, call this pixel so we know what, which one it is. I'm gonna reduce the amount of reflection. You can see this highlight here should change. We can click this square and draw a square here so it updates just the region we're interested in faster. And let's actually leave that weight all the way up and then introduce some more roughness. I wanna make this a little less smooth there and a little more rough of a reflection. And the other thing I wanna do, the main thing I wanna do is add another light to give this a little bit more of a directional shadow. So I'm gonna to go to Arnold Lights and you can see that there is no directional light. You actually have to get to that from the rendering tab or create lights. Uh, Arnold will understand this light, but it's not under the render, Arnold render, uh, uh, renderable lights. Um, you have to do it from these other men menus. Sorry, I've been recording this class so long, <clears throat> I'm starting to lose the ability to talk. So. Let's turn off the render region kind of button there. And let's grab the directional light here. And it doesn't matter where it's placed, it only matters how it's rotated. So I'm just gonna move it there for convenience sake so now I can rotate it and see the changes update in real time on the logo. And I wanna give this a direction so that let me just pump up the the light. 
I'm gonna stop and reset it just so to make sure it's actually rendering correctly. So one goofy thing you can already tell that's happening is this really big shadow that the trail is casting. We can fix that we, if we like the direction of this light. I'm gonna hit play real quick uh, so we can get back to the, and I just cranked up the value because I wanna see in an extreme circumstance how this reacts to light and shadow. And I think what I want to do is turn down the light of the sky dome light. The intensity is way too high. So let's take that down to like 0.7. And I want to be able to see the directional light a little bit better. So I don't want it being overpowered by the sky dome light. So let's select the directional light again and start rotating that around so we can kind of see its effect a little greater now that the sky dome light has lost some of its influence. And let's see, let's kind of put it in this direction kind of like that because I want it to have like some darker edges on the inset of this so we can kind of see that it is definitely three-dimensional the other thing I want to do is turn off the shadow casting on these objects so what we can do is go into their Arnold tab under the shape and turn off cast shadows and you can see it updates and we lose that shadow now we can do that for this as well. I don't want it to cast any shadows. And then let's do the same thing for this trail. Turn off cast shadows. Turn off cast shadows. So yeah, that's looking pretty good. The last thing I want to do is add a little more complexity to the shader. So let's open up the hyper shade again. And I'm going to turn on the uh, render region here, clicking and dragging. I just want to see like a section of this. Uh, I don't want to see the whole thing. What I'm going to do is pipe in the user color into the emission, but I want to do it with a uh, color correction. So let's, let's just pipe it in first under emission color. And then let's go to the shader itself and go down to a mission and actually turn that on and you can see it brightens up the logo which is nice so we need to add an adjustment layer here or a, a color correction so i'm going to hit tab and do color correct and then instead of going straight into a mission color i'm going to input it here and then output it there so now we have this one little area that we can start to adjust the color that we're piping in. So I can adjust the gamma, the hue shift, which is kind of cool. So, you know, at the end of the day, if you, if you're like, you know what, I don't like that. Th this is a quick way to make some changes to the, to the logo itself or the, um, the color, at least on the emission, you could do the same thing for putting this in the, um, putting it, piping it in through the base color as well. So I want to increase the contrast. Let's see exposure. So I'll leave this up to you to find out, you know, what's, how do you want to use these attributes? It, it all depends on the colors you want to do and, you know, but I just want to show you how you could add a little more control over it as well. And so I'm not going to fiddle with this too much now just for time's sake, but just know that's an option that you have a little, another layer of control there in the uh, hyper shade and how to pipe in the data color into other attributes of this shader. So let's just use, crank up the emission to see on and off. Definitely like it on a little bit. So I'm just going to leave it there. So in this lesson, we have so far learned, I'll turn off the render preview region, how to adjust a lot of different attributes. And the last piece of the puzzle that we need to add is the original logo back in.